Welcome back to the Lantern Rouge YouTube channel. I wake up on the Monday morning off season. What am I going to talk about? Well, Peter Sagan, an article came out this morning that back in on April 25th, not r really recently, for evading curf well, evading curfew in Monaco. And then he's there's a struggle with the police and he's been fined 5,000 euros. So let's take a look into what the article says, try and do up a bit of a timeline because Sagan apparently said in his defense afterwards that he feared he would be forced to be vaccinated, which has raised a few eyebrows because it's a little bit of a strange thing to be concerned about, uh, particularly I'm not sure if Monaco is uh, that sort of country. Anyway, he was at a party or something with his brother, Yurai Sagan. Sagan was not driving. Apparently, he had consumed a lot of alcohol. Peter Sagan and his brother, Yurai, ultimate domestique mode, was driving, designated driver, and it doesn't say that Yurai was drinking. So that's all. That's good, and that's good to see because, you know, take it for granted, some athletes, like look at Henry Ruggs, tragic case a couple of weeks ago in the NFL, they don't always do the right thing, read that. But, you know, Sagan wasn't driving, but they were breaking curfew. I believe Monaco, like a lot of countries or places around the world, principalities around the world, uh, it had a curfew at night. So I think at this time I tried to check, it was like 11 p.m. or maybe even 9.30 p.m. to uh, 6 a.m. And they were checked around 12.30 a.m. So breaking curfew, I think it got amended a few weeks later to be an hour later because that makes all the difference as we know. Uh, but yeah, bro broke curfew, police stopped them. Sagan apparently was hammered drunk and they wanted to take him to the hospital he got, got obliterated, and um, then he tried to resist uh, being extracted from the cockpit because, you know, <laughs> by the police. And when that struggle happened, unfortunately, he injured the right hand of the police officer, the Monegasque police officer, I presume, who had to take two days off work. And so what Sagan's defense says is that he has no memory of what happened. He apologized. He justified his anger because he feared he'd be forced to be vaccinated. Um, and that's what he said in the court the next day. He didn't say that when he was drunk, apparently. And But he was also just wanting to go home and got angry that he was having his plans to go home uh, derailed. So I guess it raised a few eyebrows and you might be thinking, oh, well, is Sagan like hardcore anti-vax? I mean, there's two sides to it, right? He if you don't know, Sagan apparently had COVID in February. It affected his preparation for the Spring Classics in Milano San Remo. He then had to go to Catalonia because his program got amended, and he alluded to that. After he won the stage six at Catalonia, he actually talked about his difficult preparation this year. Yeah, well, it was pretty hard from the start. Yeah, after Tirreno, Milan San Remo, without some uh, longer break, come here. I'm a little bit tired now, but still I'm very happy for this victory. It's a good start for the season and uh, also especially after what I passed last uh, two months before I came here. It was not easy and uh, yeah, now it uh, looks nice. So I guess again, not wanting to be vaccinated just after he's having passed COVID, probably not an unusual stance. And uh, if you don't know, a lot of the athletes, not just in cycling, they time this year that their vaccination around preparation for competition. But I guess what's strange and raised eyebrows is that he was feared that he'd be forcibly vaccinated, which like isn't, I guess, a common fear amongst people. Maybe it is, I don't know. And people say, well, you know, you got to think about where Sagan comes from in Slovakia. Maybe there's a more of a heightened distrust of authority, which is actually grounded in the history of those sorts of countries. But I guess this is Monaco, and I'm not sure Monaco was forcibly vaccinating people. But I don't know why this is coming out now. It happened in April 25th. They've kept it pretty quiet. Maybe the court date hearing was after the season finished recently, but it's sort of a misdemeanor thing. You got a 5,000 euro plus a 100 euro fine. You'd think they'd be dealing with that sort of thing pretty quickly. And yeah, just a strange story to come out in the off season. What's crazy about this is he's getting hammered drunks again, and he's racing Tour de Romandie like three days later, and he won the second stage at Tour de Romandie. So... That's pretty mad. And I guess I've been talking about this for a while and I often have been criticized for it or maybe people who, who don't follow cycling so much, but they're really big fans of Sagan. I mean, he won, he won world championships in America and he does wheelies, that sort, that sort of stuff. Really, really cool and wacky and zany, but he's a pretty belligerent guy sometimes and often rides in a way which I've been critical of, which does not well, isn't safe for his his colleagues and is often unapologetic for it, 
and particularly when he nearly crashed while Van Aert in the Tour de France and got uh, relegated for it last year. And then he seemed more mad that uh, Wout Van Aert gave him the finger than him nearly putting Wout Van Aert on the deck at 70k an hour. So just a bit of a weird story, as well as apparently him saying at the hearing with his lawyer that he only makes 450,000 euros a year. Now, when I saw that, I was like, I don't even know if I trust this article anymore because there's no way they could have say that said that, that he's making 450k a year, which is like obviously not the case he's like one of the if not the most highly paid rider in the world tour so anyway maybe there's going to be a clarification from Sagan's camp this only dropped this morning and he's going to have his side of the story but the, but the key facts appear to be with violating curfew had drunk a lot police asked him to get out of the car had a struggle injured the policeman's right hand Sagan's apologized for it apparently and paid his fine and probably it will move on. But otherwise, more off-season shenanigans. Also doing a video today or tomorrow about Chris Froome chasing alligators in the Florida Everglades. The off-season keeps on giving. Make sure you subscribe down below to see that enthralling content. And until then, ciao.